Faith is what we hold unto. Amen. You hold unto, you know, hope. Hallelujah. Because actually hope is the handle. You hold unto it. Family. Amen. It is what gives you the assurance of something that we can't see physically. Faith. Praise the name of Jesus. So the act of faith is what distinguishes. It is, is what actually distinguishes our ancestors. It set them apart. Our ancestors, when I talk about our ancestors, I mean Abraham, amen. I mean uh, people like uh, David, people like Samuel, people like Gideon, amen. All these ancestors of ours, you know, they operated under faith. So the, this act of faith, amen, this act of faith is what distinguished them. I just want to tell us faith is what distinguishes us, hallelujah. Faith distinguished them, praise the name of Jesus, as we are going to see. So, pray, faith, faith, it brings the invisible into existence. As we see in the book of, uh, yes, I, I talked about it. When we go, actually faith is the foundation of everything. Even in the beginning, the very beginning of everything, amen. Even before, you know, we existed, even before all that we see, amen existed physically, amen? It is faith that brought it into existence. So faith is the foundation of the existence of everything that we see, faith. Bible tells us in Genesis chapter one and verses one, and that in the beginning God, hallelujah, in the beginning God created the heavens and earth. In the very beginning he created, amen? It was faith, praise Jesus. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be. Amen. God said, let there be. So meaning that bringing the substance that existed in the invisible, bringing it to the visible. Hallelujah. Faith. Amen. It brings the invisible into existence. That means that everything we see existed. You yourself, you're, you're already there, amen. You already existed, amen. Before you, you know, you came into, you know, that physical, uh, the physical nature. Praise the name of Jesus. So that's what the Bible tells us that in, in Jeremiah chapter 1. And around five, five, it says that I knew you even before you were conceived in your mother's womb. Just imagine. He knew you. Amen. That means you already existed even before your mother and father existed. Can you imagine? Even before your mother and father met. Even before they got to know themselves, you already existed. Praise the name of Jesus. So faith is what brings invisible things into existence. Faith, it puts in order. It gives purpose. Faith is what gives purpose to us. It puts things to order. When we look at, you know, the creation of the, of the earth, the Bible tells us that it was null and void. Amen. When he created the heavens and the earth, it was null and void. That means it had no form. It had no life. Amen. It, had, it, like, it, it was like it had no, no hope. There was no, you know, substance in it. But believers, because of faith, faith, you know, it created everything that was in this order, brought it in order. I just want to tell us today, I don't know what, you know, what disorganization, maybe you are disorganized in one way or another. Your life could be disorganized, praise the name of Jesus. Your life, your life could be, you know, uh, it, it is uh, dismantled. But I just want to tell us, by faith, by faith, God can bring your life back in line. It is faith that aligns our life. Amen? It's faith that aligns our life. Praise the name of Jesus. Faith. Hallelujah. It puts everything back in order. It, is, it gives purpose. Because this, the world was created by faith, purpose came. Hallelujah. That's the reason why we have purpose. When we look at all our ancestors, their lives were disorganized from Abraham, amen, 
Their lives, believers, had no existence. The face of the world did not even recognize them. Their existence was null and void. But it was in, until they embraced faith. When they embraced faith, believers, they came into existence. That's why we still talk about them today. Praise the name of Jesus. So by faith, praise Jesus. Let us go back to, to the main scripture. I, I, I have said that today we are going to, to, major, to major on uh, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. So the Bible tells us that in verses 2, that for by it the elders obtain a good report. By it. So we see that the act of faith is what distinguished the ancestors. The act of faith, faith distinguished them. And it was faith that set them above the crowd. Hallelujah. Faith distinguished them. Faith set them above the crowd. Hallelujah. I just want to tell us believers, when we embrace faith and allow to walk in faith, Faith is going to distinguish us. Faith is going to set us out of the crowd. Praise the name of Jesus. What do I mean by faith distinguishing us and faith setting us out of the crowd? Believers, what I mean is it doesn't matter what the situation is. Right now, everybody is crying, hallelujah, because of, you know, the financial hardships. Amen. Because of the, you know, the recess. Amen. But I just want to tell us, faith can distinguish. Faith can distinguish us. It distinguishes you in spite of the circumstances that are taking place. You could be there and you are in office right now. Hallelujah. But I just want to tell us that that condition that you are passing through, what you need to do is apply the antidote of faith. Faith is going to make, turn everything around. Faith is what turned the world, the earth, and the heavens that were null and void. Faith was what turned an old man, a man like, you know, he was as good as dead, Abraham and Sarah. Amen? So it doesn't matter whether your life, whether what, what, it, what is it? Is it business? Is it you know, the condition of your children? The condition of your life? You are as good as dead? Or maybe you have a relative? I just want to assure you that apply faith. Hallelujah. Apply faith. Amen. The word of the Lord is our faith. Hallelujah. Just apply it to that condition. And one thing I want to bless the name of the Lord for the word of God. Because the Bible has every prescription. Amen. Every prescription concerning whatever situation, you just get hold of it and prescribe it. Amen. Is it healing? Apply his stripes. Is it, you, you know, is it business? Apply. Yes. Is wealth, is prosperity that you became poor, that we may be rich. What is it? Hallelujah. Is it going to nation? He said that when the spirit of the Lord comes upon us, he will, in, in, uh, in, the book of Acts 1 and 8, it says that uh, with the spirit, the power of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord cometh upon you. I'm going to give you power and you go in all, all over the world. Hallelujah. So you just have to apply that. Amen. Get hold of it. Apply it in Jesus' mighty name. Faith is what unlocks doors. Amen. It locks doors that were closed on you. It doesn't matter who closed the door on you. Amen. It doesn't matter. And one thing that I have realized, believers, is that, you know, faith goes beyond boundaries. Amen? Whatever boundary that has been placed upon your life, it is only faith that can penetrate through the hardest wall. It is only faith that can you know, penetrate through bronze. It doesn't matter whether your heavens has been closed, but I just want to tell us that the power of faith, this power of faith that created the heavens and the earth, praise the name of Jesus. Amen? It is the same power that can penetrate beyond any hurdle. It penetrates beyond any wall. Faith, it penetrates Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter. So the act of faith is what distinguishes. It distinguishes you. It distinguished our ancestors. Our ancestors were distinguished. These were normal people like us. The Gideons. Amen. In the book of Judges, when you look at Gideon, it was from the tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh was the youngest son of Joseph. Amen. Actually, was the weakest 
But faith, hallelujah, faith does things the undoable, if I may say, amen. It does things that, you know, can't be done in your life. Have you reached a place where it's like it can't be done anymore? I just want to tell us, just apply faith. Hallelujah. Apply faith. Because it is only faith, hallelujah, that is going to separate you. Actually, it is faith that makes us acceptable. Amen. You are going to be accepted. When we go in the book of Genesis, chapter 4 and verses, and verses 3, Genesis chapter 4, and let us begin from, from verse 3. This is the story about Abel and Cain. Hallelujah. I am going to paraphrase. I'm going to, not going to read the all, you know, of, of it. But I will just be paraphr paraphrasing. Amen. We know the Cain and Abel, the children of, uh, of Adam and Eve. Amen. He had, they had two sons, Abel and Cain. So the Bible tells us that, one t that uh, Abel always offered because these people knew the principle of sacrifice amen so uh, abel offered sacrifice that was acceptable to god praise jesus oh, let, let us read just verses four it says that an abel he also brought to the firstlings of his let us begin from verse three and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought all the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought it. Abel also brought his offering unto the Lord. He prays the name of Jesus Christ. But the Bible tells us that the sacrifice that Abel brought was respected by God. God respected it, meaning that God accepted the sacrifice of Abel. Hallelujah. Just I beg your pardon a bit. Amen. It is Genesis. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis. I, I want to read in this other version. Genesis chapter 4. And we begin from verses. Let us begin from verses 3. Okay. That time passed. Cain brought an offering to God from the produce of his, fa of his farm. farm. Amen. Abel also brought an offering, but the, from the firstborn, amen, so he brought the, a choice offering. Here we see the attitude of Abel's heart, amen, meaning that when Abel was bringing his offering, he did not just bring it, bring it anyhow, but he brought it by faith because he selected the first, he selected the first fruit, amen, that's the importance of first fruit. Hallelujah. But he selected from the firstborn animals of his heart choice cuts of, of meat. God accepted him. God liked Abel and his offering. But Cain and his offering didn't get approval. Why didn't it get approval as we are going to see? Amen. Cain lost his temper and he went into sulk. He lost his temper. Amen. So Cain gave in his sacrifice unto the Lord with attitude, with that negative attitude. But when we look at, at Abel, Abel came with faith. Number one, because he got what was the best. It only takes a person, a man, it only takes one to give in, to offer in what is the best. That means that he offered in what, you know, what was his life. He offered his life. Praise Jesus. Because anything that is treasured in your life, that is your strength. It's your life. So that is what Cain, I mean Abel, offered. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that Cain had words with his brother and they were out. Amen. Because of that, because he came with attitude. A lot of times we come before God, even in prayer, instead of coming with faith. Instead of coming with that sacrifice, because the first offering the Lord requires from us is the heart. That is the first sacrifice. Mom talked about the heart. He elaborated the heart, the evil heart, and then the, 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 the righteous heart, the godly heart. Amen. And then she narrated, you know, the difference between the two. 
and the blessings and the consequences that come between the two. Praise the name of Jesus. So Cain did not come by faith. Amen. He came grudgingly. He came with this negative attitude. The Bible says that, you know, he came, he was sulking. Amen. With this attitude. So you see, without faith, believers, you will always come with grumbling. Because anything without faith has no life. Anything that has no faith in it, there's no life. Amen. Anything without faith, there's no order attached to it. Amen. So the Bible tells us that because of that, you know what happens when you have you know, a, a negative attitude. It doesn't please God. God does not respect it. You may say that, but, you know, I don't have attitude. I just want to tell us, wherever you go into prayer and you are like, you know, with this grumbling heart, God, but I always pray, why, is, why are things not happening? Believers, that is the heart of Cain. Amen? That is the heart of Cain. And do you know what comes out of it? The condition of your heart will always reflect, will always be reflected. Amen? Actually, it, it shows who you are. Praise the name of Jesus. So because of that, Cain went out with his brother and then he killed his brother. Praise the name of Jesus. He killed his brother. You see what comes when you don't have faith. Because a life without faith is a failed life. A life without faith, we always, you know, you always live a life of, you know, uh, of disappointment. You will live a life of envy and jealousy because things will never work out. In faith, without faith, amen, you only murder your blessings. Unbelief is murder, amen. It kills it kills. Hallelujah. It destroys the conviction that is within you. Can you imagine these sons, Abel and Cain, were children from one family? That means Adam and, 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 and Eve brought them in a, a godly way. But because one did not have, you know, faith, he caused a broad problem. Amen. He caused problem not only to himself, but even, you know, to his family and also the generation now. So Abel brought a good and better and more acceptable sacrifice unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. He was, you know, pro pr promoted. Oh, yeah, he was prompted by faith. Abel was prompted by faith. Amen. He was prompted by faith to bring something better, something that is more acceptable unto God. Hallelujah. So faith will always make you bring something better unto God. It will always make you bring offerings that are going to be accepted by God. Praise the name of Jesus. Faith. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So let, let us go back to, to Hebrews. Let's go back to the book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So we see that believers, without faith, your life will never move on. If you don't have faith, your life is not going to move forward. Hallelujah. So number one, we say that faith is what brings the invisible into visible. Even when your life seems that like it has gone to, you know, uh, to the end of the world. I just want to tell us that faith, it's what bring is, brings it back. Amen. Even when it's nowhere to be seen, faith is what brings it back. Hallelujah. It brings it back to existence. And then we see that faith is what makes you accept it. You have seen the story of Abel and Cain. Amen. Because of faith, Abel offered, you know, a more acceptable sacrifice unto God. And it took faith. Because it did God was not available. God was not there like physically. Amen. 
But it was his faith that made him give the best. He gave him the best. The Bible says that he gave him his first fruit. Amen. He, he gave him the, the, the best, you know, the, the best sacrifice. Hallelujah. Sacrifice, you know, that had blood in it, life. That means he gave in his life. The sacrifice that he gave was a lamp. Amen. He offered it unto the Lord. Blood was shed. And blood means life. So he gave in his own life. What is it that you're attached to? Amen. What is it that you're attached to? Amen. Anything that you attach yourself to, is it your family? Maybe it could be your children, and that's what your life is. Amen. By faith, when you offer them unto the Lord, I just want to tell us, you are going to bear fruit. That's why even up to today, the voice of Abel is still crying. Hallelujah. His voice is still making impact. Why? It was because of faith. Faith does not die. Amen. Faith always calls for justice. Faith by faith. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So faith sets you also above the crowd. I've said it, it distinguishes us. As we saw, uh, let us look at... Uh, Praise Jesus. Let us go to... Yeah, we have read it. Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 2, that the act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set us above the crowd. It sets us above the crowd. So you want to be set above the crowd? Believers, apply faith. Hallelujah. In whatever condition that you are passing through. Then faith translates and makes you satisfactory to God. Tra faith is what translates us. Amen. We look at Enoch. Enoch in the book of Genesis chapter 5 and verses 21. Amen. Up to 24. Enoch was translated. Enoch did not test death. Because Enoch's life pleased God. Amen. He lived in a life, he lived in an era whereby people erred. He lived in a sinful generation. But he distinguished himself. Amen. And because of that, he pleased God and God translated him. Hallelujah. So we see that faith translates and it makes you satisfa satisfactory to God. It translated him. He did not test death. Praise Jesus. So Enoch, by faith, did not have a glimpse of death. He went to heaven without dying. Amen. It, Enoch just disappeared. That's what the Bible tells us. Let us go to the book of Genesis chapter 5 and verses 21 to 24. Genesis chapter 5 and verses 21 to 24. The Bible tells us in 21 that an Enoch lived 60, 60 and 5 years and begot Mesula and Enoch walked with God after he begot Methusela, a man, 300 scores, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch walked with God, walking with God. That means that he walked in the ways of God. He walked in ways that were pleasing with God. Hallelujah. I just want to tell us believers, faith does not just come. You work for faith. You work to achieve faith. Amen. The Bible tells us that seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all righteousness and all these things shall come unto you. Amen. So just as righteousness is worked for, you seek for it. Amen. You work for it. Seek first. Amen. In seeking is entailed effort. You work for it. Amen. So the Bible tells us that for he feared God and he walked with God. Amen. He walked with God. Walking with God. That means he sought God. He sought to do the right things that God, you know, required. 
And the Bible tells us that he just disappeared. He did not test any glimpse of death. Hallelujah. He was translated, praise the name of Jesus. So faith translates us. He, he, he was just translated from human form, from this physical form into the spirit form. He didn't die. So believers, faith is what translates us. Amen? It translates us. It translates anything that you touch. If you walk in the ways of the Lord. Amen? Maybe there's a picture that, you know, people, give, that, that, that people portray you. Amen? There's a picture that you are portrayed. And when we talk about facts, it's the fact. That's what you are. Amen? But I just want to tell us that when we operate in faith. Amen? I, do you know that even walking in the ways of God is faith? Amen? Walking in the ways of God is faith. Walking in the fear of God is faith. So we see that Enoch was translated. Amen? Why was it translated? Because it satisfied God. His faith satisfied God. It is impossible to walk in the ways of the Lord if you don't have faith. Amen? Because what keeps you moving, believers, is that hope. Amen. It is that hope. It's the substance of things hoped for. So this hope keeps you moving. Amen. It keeps you carrying, you know, it keeps carrying you forward. Praise the name of Jesus. So faith translates us. Let us allow faith to translate us. Hallelujah. It translates us from what you are right now. Amen. Maybe what you are right now is, you know, you are a nobody. That's what you are defined. Amen. You are non-existent. Though you, are, though you walk, though you are breathing, though, though you move. Amen. But you are considered non-existence. Amen. You are considered non-existent. That means you are considered like you don't exist at all. But I just want to tell you, is faith is what makes you visible. Amen. Can you, can you, do you know that you can be in a large crowd and you are invisible? You, and you are non-existent? People may be around and making maybe discussions. And you also offer to contribute. And what your contribution is not, you know, is not taken. Why? Because you, are not, you don't exist. But I just want to tell us, when you operate in faith, faith will translate you. Amen. It, it, it translates you to life. Hallelujah. It translates you to life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then another thing that faith does, by faith you receive deliverance. Amen. By faith there is deliverance. Deliverance of all manner. Deliverance of all nature. We look at a man, Noah, amen, in the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verses 13. We are not going to read, I'll keep on paraphrasing, amen. Genesis chapter 6 and let us look at verses 13. The Bible tells us in verses 13, and God said unto Noah, amen, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold, I will destroy them from the, with the earth. Amen. And make thee an ark. Oh, Jesus. And make thee an ark. Let, let, let me get it from this other translation also. Genesis chapter 6. And we begin from, from verse 3. I mean from verse 13. The Bible says, and God said to Noah, it's all over. It's the end of the human race. The violence is everywhere. I am making a clean sweep. Amen. I'm bringing the earth to an end. I'm making a clean sweep. That means that I'm sweeping off the earth. Plus the people inclusive. I'm wiping everything out. Praise the name of Jesus. So you see what faith does. 
Now, because of the faith, the Bible tells us when you, you read what happened, because of the wickedness of man, man became so wicked. But even amidst the wickedness, there was one man who was singled out. Amen. He was singled out. Noah was singled out. And then because of that, the Lord came unto him. Amen. Noah walked by faith. The Lord was hungered. Amen. He came unto him and then he spoke unto him. I just want to tell us that faith, believers, makes God, you know, you get a relationship with God. You hear the voice of God. When your life, yes, is, when your life is founded on faith, when you live a life of faith. Amen. The Bible tells us, and God came unto Noah because of the wickedness that was upon the face of the earth. And he said that I'm going to sweep everything. Amen. Because of this violence, I'm making a clean sweep. Build yourself a, a, an ark. Can you imagine? Noah made an ark on dry ground. Amen. If that is not faith, then what is that? He tells him that build an ark for me. Meaning that Noah was operating by the voice of God. He was walking in obedience by the voice of God. God tells him to build an ark where there was no water. Isn't that insane? I just want to tell us faith may be like it's insane. Amen. Faith is crazy. For you to operate in faith, you have to be crazy. Amen? Because when you are a normal human being, you can't operate in faith. It is only the people who are abnormal. Amen? People who are crazy that operate in faith. God tells Noah, you know, because of the wickedness of man, build an ark. Amen? We see how God delivered Noah plus his family and the animals that, you know, went into the ark. So it was faith. Hallelujah. Faith, you receive deliverance. Noah, by faith, he became an heir. And he also became the, pos the po possessor of righteousness. Because God considers you righteous when you have faith. God considered Noah righteous. All around him were, was wickedness. But amid this wickedness, he moved in righteousness. So he was considered righteous. He was the possessor. He possessed righteousness. Faith, believers, is what makes us righteous. When you operate in faith, hallelujah, faith gives you righteousness. Hallelujah. So we see that he overcame. Bible tells us that, you know, it started raining 40 days and 40 nights. He built an ark where there was no. I just want to tell us, if you have a plan of doing something, as long as you got a confirmation from God, it doesn't matter whether there's water or not. It doesn't matter whether you have capital or not. It doesn't matter whether, whether you are qualified or not. Noah built an ark on dry ground. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter whether you are all dry. Dryness means that, believers, there's, there's nothing you can hold on to. Hallelujah. Dryness means that you are not qualified for it. Dryness means that, you know, there's no any other option. Amen. But I just want to tell us that even in that condition, Build up your faith. Start building your faith, somebody. Hallelujah. Build up your faith. You want a promotion, build up your faith. It doesn't matter whether your papers somehow are dry. You don't qualify. You don't, you match up to that standard. Amen. You are not matching up to that standard. But I just want to tell us, just apply that faith. Apply the faith. Hallelujah. Apply faith. Noah applied faith. People laughed. I've told us that you have to be crazy. Like mo most of the times, you know, believers are called crazy, crazy people. <laughs> you do things that are crazy. These people around Noah, you know, they mocked him. 
They laughed at him. They scolded him. They did all these things at him. Amen. But no one do you know one thing I love with faith? Faith is always silent. Faith does not fight back. Amen. You physically, using physical effort. Noah built the ark silently. He built the ark silently. It made no meaning. It actually made, there was no meaning. Amen. It made no meaning. Because an ark is supposed, you know, to, 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 to function where water is. But there was no sign of water at all, at all. But this man, by faith, amen, so he was delivered. I just want to tell us, usually deliverers come by us obeying in faith the voice of God. So we see Noah was delivered. He and his family, they were, they were delivered. Delivered from death. Praise Jesus. Even when everybody was dying. Amen. The Bible tells us, and the earth perished. It perished. Everything, as, as God has said, he made a clean sweep. Amen. He made a clean sweep of the earth. Meaning that nothing, you know, remained against. Nothing remained standing. Noah was delivered. So, when we operate in faith, faith is what delivers. We receive deliverance by faith in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So, the other thing that faith does... Faith takes you to your inheritance. Faith takes you to your inheritance. When we go in the book of, let us look at Genesis chapter 12. The book of Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 to 8. Genesis chapter 12 and verses 1 to 8. I will just paraphrase, amen. This is a story of Abraham, amen. God calls Abraham from his homeland. And he promises him that he's taking him to a promised land. So Abraham picks up his belonging and he starts moving. Abraham just obeys, amen. He obeyed. He obeyed the call of God. He was called and he obeyed God and, you know, he went. Not even knowing where he was going. Faith. I just want to tell us these ancestors of ours really had faith. Can you imagine being called from your land, from all your kindred, to a land that you don't know, just because you had a voice? And he went, he left. He bade them farewell. And he started moving on his journey. Many times God has called us believers to come from, you know, that place that you are holding so dearly. God is telling you to let go. That he may take you to, you know, to a place of your inheritance, to a place of your destiny. And a lot of people are not, you know, so daring like Abraham was. People are still holding on and to things. What is it that you are holding on to? Amen. Because that can be your homeland. Amen. The place that you are grounded, anything that you are grounded upon. The Lord is saying, let go for, of whatever it is. Most of the times, you know, when it comes more especially to substance, or the things that we own, amen, and God says that I want you to take this to, to, you know, for the work of God. A lot of people, you know, it be, a lot of people, you know, get it so difficult to let go of it. I just want to tell us this place, this land of Ur, where Abraham, you know, his homeland, 
his ancestral, you know, uh, homeland. Abraham was so attached to it. Because this is where his ancestors dwelt. This is when Abraham was called, he wasn't a young man, he was old. He grew up in this place. So there was an attachment, a great attachment. Amen. His friends existed, were living there. He had business there. But see, the Lord says that, let go. What great faith it is. And usually when God speaks to you to let go of anything, that means that God is taking you to something better. He is taking you to an inheritance. So the, the Bible tells us that he leaves his country. He leaves his family. Amen. He leaves his father's home. He leaves his land. Hallelujah. And I'm taking you to a land that I will show you. Amen. And it says that there are promises. Of course that, you know, God gave Abraham. But many times still it takes faith. Because how many times has God given you a promise attached to a call? And up to now, you still want confirmation. God has spoken to you, I want you to do this and this and this for the kingdom of God. On several occasions, but you still want confirmation. It says that when you do this, I'm going to do this for you. But you are still holding on to your home country. Amen. You have refused to leave your kindred. You have refused to let go. The Lord is saying that let go. Amen. What is it that God has called you to do? Either to do with your life, either to do with what God he has blessed you with. Amen. God is calling you to let go. Let go of your life. We look at Abraham. Abraham let go of his life. This is actually letting go is sacrifice his life for God. Bible tells us that this man he started moving to a place he did not even know. Amen. Abraham left just as God had said. And of course he went with the Lord and he also went with his father. Though his father, you know, stopped at uh, he stopped on the way in Haran. Their destination was supposed to be Canaan. There are a lot of people, because of lack of faith, you stop, you begin off well. God has spoken. I want you to do this. Believers, it takes faith to start off a journey and also to come to the end of the journey. A lot of people have begun the journey. They have begun the journey of their salvation. They started it with faith. They have started a journey of, of business. A journey of, you know, whatever it is. Maybe there's something that you started off with. There was a call upon you, but as you reached, you know, before even you reached your destination, you gave up. Hallelujah. If you are there, you know, pick up your pieces and start moving to your destination. The Bible tells us that, you know, Abraham, he took everything. He took all his possession. Taking all your possession, what does it mean? Faith. It means that everything, you may not have the physical possession, but a person who operates in faith, you know, means that you have to come up with everything, your heart, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body, your everything has to operate in faith. Because these are also hindrances to your faith. But you have to get them all. Abraham took everything, he took all his possession and moved in faith. Praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So the Bible tells us, and they moved on. They moved on, let us go to verses eight. And he moved on from there to the hill country east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent beyond Bethel to the west, and I to the east, he built an altar there, and he prayed, and Abraham kept moving steadily, making his way south to the Negev. Amen. There's a place that he reached, and he pinched camp. 
I just want to tell us that on our journey of faith, this journey of faith, of course, when God tells you to move from one point to another, maybe you acted in faith. Amen. God, for example, let me give an easy example. God tells you that go to your bank account, get this amount of money, and then give it as an offering for evangelism, to preach the, 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 to the souls, amen, to do the work of God. And then you get it. You offer, because remember, usually whatever you do unto the Lord, it comes with a blessing. Though that should not be your intention because you want a blessing, because that would be better trade. But what I'm trying to say, there's nothing that you do for the Lord that, come, that does not come with a blessing. At least if you don't receive the blessing now, there's a great, the greatest blessing we know is the blessing of eternity, eternal life. So the Bible tells us that even on his journey to the promised land, he reached Bethel, amen, and he pinched tent. On our journey of faith, things may not be easy. Maybe you gave in this offering. The Lord told you that you give in unto the Lord. But you have reached a place whereby you are stuck. It's like you are not moving forward, yet you heard the voice of the Lord and you acted. But you are now pitching, you are in this time of, you know, you have pitched a tent somewhere. Remember, a tent is something temporary. A, a, a tent is something that is temporal, amen. You are temporarily there. Yes, you heard the voice of the Lord. Keep on believing, keep on moving in faith. Bible tells us that, and he moved, and he reached Bethel, and he pitched a tent between Bethel to the west, and also I to the east. Hallelujah. He pitched a tent there that life wasn't easy. I just want to tell us the life of faith. When you have faith, when faith is ushering you unto your destination, there are a lot of things you are going to meet in between, you know, the, the point of, the, the starting point to the end of it all. There are places that you are going to pinch camp. There are places that you are going to pinch a tent. But I just want to tell us that is temporal. You heard the voice of the Lord maybe in ministry. ministry. You started off ministry, amen? But you have reached a place where you have pinched a tent. I just want to tell us it's temporal. Amen. It wasn't easy. Maybe even they lacked food. Because remember, they were going through a desert. They reached a place where they could not go further. They were tired. They were exhausted. Amen. On this walk of salvation, it could be a call. But I just want to tell us, the place that you have reached, it, it could be difficult. And you are very sure that I've not yet reached my destination. But where you have reached, you feel you can't go on anymore. I just want to tell us that is temporal. Hallelujah. You are, you are just pitching a tent. It's just a tent. But you are moving forward. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that Abraham did not only pitch a tent. Amen. But he also built an altar. It is faith that will make you keep in communication, in, you know, in communion with God. So Abraham knew that even when you know, the promise upon his life was not yet fulfilled, he knew that I was just you know, on transition, on transit. He knew that I have not yet reached. He still had hope that but I will reach my destination. He still had hope that God is going to fulfill the promise upon his life. He knew that he was only pinching tent. Amen. He knew that he was only there temporarily. Believers, even before you reach, I know this is the state where most of the believers are. Amen. A lot of believers are in this place of, you know, the place of Bethel. Amen. There are pinched tents there. I know in this place, they also received a lot of attacks from enemies. Remember, they were in foreign land. Amen? But Abraham did not give up. Amen? The Bible tells us in verses 9 that he kept on moving. Praise Jesus. 
Abraham, he kept on moving. He kept on moving. In 12 and verses 9, the Bible says, And Abraham journeyed, going on still towards the south. That means that even had direction, God, faith is what gives you direction to your destiny. Remember, at first, he pinched come. What does, let, let us see what King James says. He says, and he moved, in verses 8, and he moved earth in a mountain on the east of Bethel, and he pinched his tent, having Bethel on the east, and I on the, Bethel on the west, and I on the west. East, and there he built an altar unto the Lord, and he called upon the name of the Lord. On this walk of faith, even when you reach a place that you know it is like dark, you are not seeing your way forward. I just want to tell us pinch tent, I mean, build, build an altar. The altar that is prayer, amen. Build an altar of prayer. This is what is going to keep your faith alive. Prayer is what believers ignites our faith. Prayer is what puts faith to motion. Prayer is what gives faith life. Prayer is what grows our faith. Amen. So in whatever condition, don't cease to build an altar for the Lord. The Bible says that he built an altar there and he prayed to God. Amen. On this work, the work of faith, it requires prayer. Prayer is what is going to keep the fire of your faith burning. So the Bible says that though he pinched tent, I've told us that pitching tent here, what God is, what the Bible is referring to, that even on this journey, there's a place where you are going to reach, and it will really be so, so hard. You are even going to ask yourself questions. Did really God speak? Did really God say that, you know, I, give, I, I offer this sacrifice? Amen? Because that is a place where you reach that you offered sacrifice unto the Lord. Maybe you gave an offering of finances. Amen? And you have reached a place where you don't even have anything to eat. I just want to tell us you are only pitching tent there. It is only temporarily. Amen? You are still going on the move. So in that place of hardship, believers, apply prayer. Because it is prayer that will keep you moving. But a lot of people have died, yes, in that place. Have died in Bethel. They have died in that place of, you know, of the tent. What you are going through is just temporary. The pain is just temporary. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that Abraham, after pitching the tent, of course, for some time, your tent, your pitching that place, yes, that you are, you, you know, you are resting, that resting place or, or that tent place could take years, but it depends, believers, it, it, it depends on your, your attitude. It depends on your relationship with God. Do you know some people even take longer in that place? But the Bible tells us that Abraham, because he still had a connection with God, in verses 8, he kept on moving steadily, making his way south to Negev. Then a famine came to the land. Abraham went down to Egypt to live. Yes, it was a hard famine. Faith is what is going to keep you moving even when it is hard. So the Bible tells us that he kept on moving. Abraham kept on moving. Even when, you know, it, 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 famine, the Bible says that the famine really hit so hard. There are people there that, you know, are hit so hard. Hit so hard in business. Hit so hard in your family. Hit so hard in your health. You are hit so hard. Maybe you're already now in, you know, intensive care. You are hit so hard. But don't lose hope. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, and then he sojourned. He went to Egypt. He went down to Egypt. I just want to tell us that in this walk of faith, journeying to the place of your destiny, God will always, you know, give you a place of, of solace, if I may say. Amen. It will console you, it will give you a, a place of solace to console you a bit. 
He will provide. Amen. Like the Lord provided manna unto the children of Israel. He provided unto them. There are miracles that will come, even in that place. Especially when you keep the fire of prayer burning. Amen. He will always, you know, bring in some small miracles in that place. As you are going to the greater, to the greater miracle that he promised you. That is the place where God will even maybe connect with, you know, sympathizers, if I may say. Or in that, in, during that time, it is really difficult. But God will bring you a person who will give you a cup of, a cup of water. Amen. People who will help you, give you, you know, some small handouts. Actually, this is a place where, where people live on handouts. You are living on an handout. Amen. And out is, you know, you're provided, but it's not satisfactory. But at least you appreciate God for it. Amen? Because it keeps you, you know, alive. So maybe you are in that place. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. Because your appreciation, even in times such as this, I just want to tell us, I'm going to push you forward. So the Bible tells us that it took Abraham for just a moment one thing with god god will never let you he will just he will never keep away from you he will always be watchful amen by faith when you move by faith god will always watch over you amen and he will always position people to help you in that time amen he will position people you know to to to, to welcome you you could be sleeping in somebody's house and you are aged. You could be sleeping on somebody's sofa set. That is Egypt. At least you are not sleeping outside. I appreciate God for it. Amen. Praise Jesus. You could be living a life that is really not your dream life. But at least it is better than nothing. That is your Egypt. Amen? Faith will allow you to appreciate. When you have faith, you will appreciate. Egypt wasn't the destination of, of Abraham. Ne? You know, but God, you know, just placed uh, Egypt for Abraham to strengthen him. You know, this journey is not easy. You are going to be beaten in this journey. But I just want to tell us, but God will always be available. Even when it seems like it's not available. Even when it seems that he's silent. I just want to tell us that God is watchful. He watches us. I do believe that in this season, especially in this season of hard famine, there was silence. Because from this time, you know, it was like God was quiet on Abraham. God spoke once. But now Abraham was just living by faith. He went by, even the prayer he prayed, it was just by faith. The voice was not there. The direction was given once. So the Bible tells us that by faith, he went to Egypt. And from Egypt, after some time, and I, one thing that I, I thank God, even the, the places that God takes us for a moment, if we move by faith, those are the places where we get our blessings from. When we look at the life of Abraham, most of the places that he, he, he got his blessings from were the places that God, you know, those resting places for a moment. He accumulated, you know, wealth. So obedience is better than sacrifice. In your journey, your walk to your destiny, when you apply faith, there are a lot of things that come with faith. Obedience. Amen. Endurance. Patience. Resilience. Praise the name of Jesus. So we see that Abraham, he was called, he obeyed God, and he gave him his, God gave him his inheritance. Though he lived in tent, 
he was, you know, waiting expectantly. Though Abraham lived in tents, he waited expectantly. He waited confidently, looking forward to the fulfillment of his promise. I just want to tell us, you have pinched tents, or maybe God has taken you to a place. You could be maybe in your brother or even your sibling's house. Your youngest brother is home, amen. And you're maybe the, hel uh, the elder, the eldest. But you're pitching tent on his sofa sets. You're pitching tent in his boy's quarter, amen. But Abraham, the Bible tells us, he did not lose hope. He waited expectantly. Wait expectantly wherever you are, hallelujah. On your destination, wait expectantly. Look forward to the fulfillment of the promise. Look forward with hope unto the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then faith. Let us see what, what, what faith does again. I hope my time is still there. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Says my time is up. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, we have gone away. Is it around 13 minutes past, but believers, let us walk by faith. We are going to continue from here, from here tomorrow, from there tomorrow, and we are going to look at men and women of God that walked by faith. So you could be, we have ended in a place where Abraham had pinched tent and he moved on, and then he reached, had fam famine hit the land, and he said that the land was, the famine was so hard but then they went to Egypt. Praise Jesus. So on this journey, you could be in a tent, pinching a tent somewhere. Maybe you are in Egypt somewhere, because Egypt is better off. You know, one thing that I love God on this journey of faith, it takes us from one level to another. Amen? From one level to another, from pitching tent, now it takes to, to Egypt. Egypt is like the America of today. Praise Jesus. But I just want to tell us, even if you could be, you know, in a place that you think is Egypt, I mean, is your destination, but faith wants to take you to your destination, to the fulfillment of your inheritance. Praise the Lord. So I just want to bless the name of the Lord so very much for this wonderful uh, moment. Tomorrow we are going to start from there. So let us have a life. Let us live by faith. We are going to have a fulfilled life, a life, a, satisfa a satisfactory life. May God bless you so abundantly. Thank you so much. Until we meet again tomorrow, greetings again from our mom, doctor, uh, prophetess, Emmanuel, Agnes, Avako, and Ayam Ministries as a family at large. Until we meet again today, the conference is still going on. Praise the name of Jesus. So let us meet today again at 10 in the evening. God bless 10 a.m., I mean p.m. God bless you so abundantly. Shalom and shalom. Bye-bye.